All right, we are going to be focusing on the Ukraine war, what's going on there. Do I do want to update you right now on the whereabouts of one Travis King, of course. He is uh, the U.S. Army private who uh, just ran into North Korea, uh, and we haven't heard word from him since, or for that matter, the North Koreans since. He had some frustrations and crises, personal otherwise, he was dealing with, uh, but his family wants to know what's going on with him. Even the U.S. government is trying to find out what has happened to him, but going through the demilitarized zone and all of a sudden, poof, that's it. And it's been a few days now. General Jack Keane, I wanted to get into this segment uh, with this issue with you, because we still don't know. Any, any suspicions on your part? Well, I think, first of all, uh, he was likely running from something as opposed to something. Right. And that, by that I mean, you know, he was found guilty of assault and spent a couple of months in a South Korean jail and heading home to his home station at Fort Bliss. And likely, we don't know for a fact because the military hasn't advised us, but likely facing discharge from the military with a less than honorable discharge because he had committed a felony. And, and, and that, in terms of the embarrassment that he would be facing with his family, et cetera, may have put added pressure on the youngster. And as I said, he was running from that more than running towards a communist state, trying to escape it, in a sense. I think the primary thing here is to get somebody in touch with him. We don't have direct contact, obviously, no diplomatic relations, but we normally work through Sweden to do that for us in the past. And I know the State Department is certainly working on that, to get somebody to talk to him, to see what his welfare is, and certainly to see if he is being held against his will, hmm. which I suspect by now he truly is. So when, when he ran off, no one saw him being apprehended. He just ran off. So we assumed that, you know, North Korean guards, soldiers uh, seized him, uh, probably put him in, in some sort of, you know, a jail for the time being. But no comments out of the, the government there. And I'm just wondering, with the backdrop being these ever-escalating missile tests and, and, and advanced weapons at that, um, you just have to wonder what's going on. Yeah, well, certainly, yeah, he ran into a building where the North Korean guards were taking a break, and obviously uh, they took him under control. The, the good news here is that we've always been able to get our people out of North Korea as a result of some negotiations, and, and we've had some success in doing that. And certainly North Korea is very upset at this time because the USS Kentucky a nuclear ballistic missile submarine is parked in Busan, a harbor in southeastern South Korea. That event has not occurred in 40 years. The reason for that event is to demonstrate to North Korea, who keeps waving nuclear weapons in our face, that we are a nuclear power, and we want to send that message loud and clear to them, because we want strategic deterrence here, certainly, and, and Kim Jong-un, though threatening. Yeah to use nuclear weapons. We want to make certain he never even thinks about doing something like that. And also, we want to show the South Koreans that they truly are under the umbrella of our nuclear protection, because there's been, in South Korea and Japan, some stirrings, Neil, about wanting to acquire nuclear weapons themselves to protect themselves. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, real quickly, General, the, I did want to get your take on the Russians now opting out of this green deal they had. Uh, with Ukraine, part of that bigger deal with Ukraine, and now, uh, you know, upping their attacks uh, that will affect Ukraine, its own ability, not only to get food, but to get food out of the country. What do you make of it all? Yeah, Russia's motivation here is they, they want back into the SWIFT banking system communications. Right. And you're very familiar with it, and it would be very powerful for them, and I don't think that's likely that anybody's going to grant them that. They also want some relief on the sanctions on their own agricultural industry. Lots of missiles have been fired at the port facilities. Last night, they started to hit the granary and agricultural in industry. The last time this was broken, when the Russians pulled out of the grain deal, the Ukrainians did it themselves. They loaded up their grain ships and they moved them, and they started to exit their ports, and the Russians let it happen. I think we should do that again, or 
bring in an international escorts of ships. Doesn't even have to be the United States, because everybody's concerned about these grain imports in terms of world prices and certainly hunger itself and start doing it. I think we can call the Russians bluff on this. They know they're going to be an international pariah when the prices of grain change in the world economy and also countries who need that food begin to have starvation issues. That would obviously take weeks and months. But those countries right now who are neutral towards Russia are likely very frustrated uh, with the impact of this. I don't think this, going to be, this will persist for a long period of time, particularly if we're willing to take some action to call this bluff on it. General, thank you very much, and uh, hit you with a lot there.